the uh, something that I, without a shadow of a doubt, has been hot on social media. Uh, the US election. Twitter, for one, has been working overtime to censor tweets by Donald Trump claiming voter fraud. Um, warnings on so many, you've got to click through to see them. Uh, disproves. Look at that. It's just one after the other. And then many of the major TV networks stopped broadcasting a press conference by the president, it is still the president. The black squares represent those stations that went, that cut him off. As soon as he started to claim he was robbed, that there was some voter fraud out there. Now, I don't agree with him that the fraud is of a kind that, uh, you know, so significant to have flipped the election. But I find it so ominous, this censorship, that major TV networks would not even let the president make his case. What do you make of all this? Well, I'm sure you remember a couple of weeks ago, I said that the censorship of content about the Hunter, Bite, the, the Hunter Biden laptop scandal was the worst censorship I'd ever seen on Twitter and in the media. Well, this is worse. This, this is infinitely worse. I have never seen anything like this, Andrew. Any kind of tweet, not just from Donald Trump, but from anyone that mentions the possibility that there's even a, a slight irregularity um, in the election result is, is being dismissed and censored. And as you say, you have to click through a dozen warnings to actually get there. And this is despite the fact that Twitter allowed any mention of Russian collusion, which is a far less believable oh, theory yes. than a little bit of domestic interference, to trend all over the place. And what irritates me, Andrew, is I know Donald Trump is talking very specifically specifically about fraud. But look, think about it. He has to fire up the base. And, and the best way to keep them engaged and interested and fighting hard, of course, is to talk about fraud. But there are actually some very legitimate legal challenges, and which are totally non-controversial. There's often uh, legisl uh, li litigation after a US election, recounts, etc., that could potentially um, have an effect on the results. And, and what's irritating me is that there is simply not enough discussion of this in the media who have decided that they have the constitutional power to call the election for Joe Biden. That is completely false. The media has no power at all to call the election. Joe Biden is not the president-elect just because CNN says so. When the votes have not been verified, the count hasn't finished, and legal action is only just starting to be brought. One that is of particular note um, is the case of, say, poll watchers in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania who were not permitted. There have been multiple reports. They were prevented from actually watching and verifying the count, often quite aggressively, which would possibly mean the Republicans will argue that those votes that were counted in that manner were counted illegally and should therefore be disqualified. The second one that could be particularly uh, interesting, this I think is the strongest case they have, is again in Pennsylvania, where the Republicans have brought to the Supreme Court of the United States, the biggest court in the land, that the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania unconstitutionally ruled that ballots could be received up to three days after the election in Pennsylvania when the legislature had ruled earlier in the year in Pennsylvania that that was not the case. They had to be received by election day. The Supreme Court of the United States saw this matter before the election, indicated they were concerned that this ruling was constitutional and that they will review it again after the election. Given the makeup of the court, which is of course a 6-3 conservative majority, many of them constitutional originalists, it is highly likely, Andrew, that they will in fact rule in favor of the Republicans, which would mean that any ballot received after, after the election day, which have been instructed to be kept separate, will be struck off. If that's the case, that most likely means that the state of Pennsylvania and all of its 20 electoral college votes will go to Donald Trump. Add to that the fact that the count in Arizona has not finished and the Republicans are pretty confident, it seems, still that they will have eventually win Arizona since the gap is narrowing. That takes away 31 electoral college votes from Joe Biden, which pulls him under the 270 um, minimum that he needs. And that throws the whole thing wide open again. Then it's down to the state of Georgia and their recount. So shame on the media for declaring that according to them, Joe Biden is now suddenly the president of the United States and shame on Kamala Harris and Joe Biden for using this as their cue to make their so-called victory speeches when nothing is verified, the count hasn't even finished and we have yet to see what the courts decide. 
Well, that was extremely well put, Daisy. I mean, uh, I'm not so sure that there are enough, enough votes in uh, Pennsylvania, even if the court ruling goes that way, but we don't know. Uh, you make some very good points. I've had my say, but I won't engage further. I th I'm glad that you had yours. Daisy Cousins, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you so much, Andrew. Hang on, because coming up next is Alan Jones, followed by Paul Murray. But for me, it is good night. Alan Jones has it all. Political heavy.